It's time to dish with the Prince Thanksgiving edition. Ed DeRosa with David Levitch. And David, we couldn't call it the dish on Thanksgiving Eve if we didn't start out with your favorite dish. I'm a dressing guy. Yeah, and you call it dressing? Yeah, and uh, you know, on, whatever whatever is on the table dressing-wise, I eat. Because I only eat it once a year. Like, turkey is like, turkey's fine. Like, it's kind of overrated. But, like, I like yeah. the we, – we got this jello salad, too, that's a tradition of ours that's good, too. Oh. So there's a couple of things. Marshmallows? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Marshmallows, a yellow base. It's good. All right. Yeah, I'm, uh, about you? I call it stuffing, but my mom uh, does hers with Italian sausage. Really good. Um, and I think part of it is I literally only have it Thanksgiving. So it's good, but it's also kind of a treat for that reason with the on turkey for sure. Not a big sweets guy, so dessert, you know, it's fine. Like whatever, I'll have a piece of pie, but it's the stuffing for me for sure. Yeah, pumpkin pie is the most overrated thing on earth. Yeah, it's, it's whatever. And I actually prefer ham to turkey, but being the American I am, I will have the bird uh, on Thanksgiving. Yeah, I agree. I don't. I mean, some honey baked ham is good, but I'm going for the have bird. Have you ever done well. Thanksgiving at Churchill? I do it every year. Oh, I mean, we don't, so we go every year. We, we go every year, but we don't, we eat at night. But yeah, I mean, I'm there every year for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is about one of the best crowds of the year outside of Derby Week. Oh, yeah. No, it's, uh, I would say, obviously, the, the Thurby run to Derby, the night racing. Mm-hmm. But after that, I would have to think Thanksgiving and Mother's Day are the next two biggest days. Yeah, I agree with you completely. And then the Clark Day is probably one of my favorite days of the year at Churchill as a whole. It's uh, I like that the Clark's on a Friday. It's it's fun to go to the track with a great one on a Friday and still Thanksgiving week and it's packed and it's always fun. Yeah, no, I uh, enjoy that day as well. And a uh, perfect segue. We've talked turkey. Now we can talk horses. Uh, the Clark, one of the last great ones of the year. Certainly the last here in Kentucky. And we get a Kentucky Derby winner showing up and – for me, obviously, they're going for the grade one, the purse, be great to win. Maybe a championship on the line. And I have said, and uh, I think I would stick to it. You can always change your mind. But as it sits now, if he were to win, I would vote for him as champion three-year-old male. I completely agree with you. I think two grade ones, including the most famous grade one of the year, the Derby, plus beating older horses for a grade one would probably put them over the top, in my opinion. I think it's smart that the connections are running him because they weren't going to run him at first. And with him running in this race, I think it gives him a legit chance to win. I know there's some people that say Taba. And if you win the Derby and then you beat older horses, I know the Clark's not the best field in the world, but you can't look at it like that. You got to take it as a grade one. It's always a grade one. They're showing up. Yeah. And it's like, I think so I saw some, it might have been you that said on Twitter, they can't pick the field of who he's running <laughs> against. Like, I don't know why, like, yes, you can say it's a bad field, but Rich Strike can't pick who he's running against. At the end of the day, if he wins the race, it's a grade one. Epicenter has the one grade one in the Travers where he beat Rich Strike, but Rich Strike also beat him in the Derby, good setup or not. And the Derby has a little more weight than the Travers, in my opinion. Rich Strike has also ran a lot this year. I know Epicenter has as well, but Rich Strike's danced all the dances. He ran in the Belmont, the Travers. The Lucas Classic, the Clark, I mean, the um, Classic and now the Clark. So he's running and he's running respectively well. So if he can get now the pace scenario is a little up against him, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, always the big question. And, uh, you know, I certainly appreciate them uh, sticking with sort of who brought them there uh, in Sonny Leone. But uh, I'd be a lot more interested with, uh, I don't I even, I mean, it's true, better, there are better jockeys out there, but uh, it, it I wouldn't mind seeing him with a different pilot. And in this case, he certainly fits all the numbers I look at. He's right there with every horse in the field. So he is a very logical winner of this race. I do think it's going to be tough to catch injunction and being given that one's connections. uh, I think we're actually going to get a decent price. Obviously rich strikes going to get attention, Brad Cox. uh, So I think injunction is going to be the right price and it's going to be the one on the lead. Uh, He's the one I'm most excited to bet. Yeah, we got to hope West Willpower and Injunction go at it early on the lead for Rich Strike to set it up. I also, yes. I don't look much in the jockeys, but I think it's interesting that Joel Rosario is riding proxy. Now, I don't know if it was like a last second thing for West Willpower to go to the Clark, but he's rode, he rode him in the, um, what's the race called at Keeneland, the grade three, whatever it's called. The Fayette? Um, when, yeah, the Fayette, when yep, he rode him Fayette. in the Fayette. 
And I guess Proxy's always been pointed in this race, so this is where he was going to be regardless. But I think it's interesting that Rosario shows up on Proxy and not West Willpower. So that's something I'm going to pay attention to. I haven't, I've looked at the race, but I haven't decided who I'm going to pick yet. I think Rich Strike needs the pace from Injunction and West Pel- Willpower to set up for him. But I think there's some interesting players, and I don't blame you for taking a shot with Injunction, it sounds like. Yeah, uh, and it, it is in the, the jockey machinations because Saez, who's represented by Karen, obviously has an in with Godolphin. He wrote a central quality. Uh, now and um, that one. Dubai um, World Cup winner. Yeah, that, exactly. So uh, th- that he shows up here, I mean, it makes you wonder, did like after the Fayette, Karen call up and say, hey, we want to get back on this horse, not knowing Proxy might end up here. I don't know. Um, either one, or I should say neither one would surprise me if they were to win. Th- this is, I mean, the, the grade one talent is certainly dubious. You only have the one grade one winner in Rich Strike and only one multiple graded stakes winner in the whole field. But from a wagering standpoint, this is an evenly matched group. And if you have any opinion one way or the other, you'll probably get your price. Yeah, and I'm and I know they're grade one races, but I'm taking this field over any day against Flightline against four horses or like the life is goods <laughs> against four horses. Like this is a very good betting race, so it makes it an intriguing race into the whole. And I know it's not super grade one quality, but for an end of the year grade one with eighty seven horses retiring, I mean we can't complain that much. I think it's a really good betting race. Yeah. Who's going to be the favorite? Bridge strike. Yeah, he probably will be. I, I, I honestly like. I think West Willpower would be close to him because they're going to see the, it'll be close. the speed, it's, it's be the a figures. Board. Brad Cox. Yeah, it'll be close. It'll be close. Is Bataglia still the morning line maker? Oh yeah. So we'll see what Mike pegs the Derby favorite as. Yeah, he, he it's not out yet. I'm sure Mike has done it, so I don't want to make it like yeah. we're waiting on him. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, they drew on Saturday and haven't published the morning line yet. But uh, look forward I to seeing that. I saw that last night. Out. Uh, Stars of Tomorrow 2 is Saturday. Closing day Sunday, mandatory payout uh, in all the wagers, including the pick six, which currently has a carryover. We'll see if that lasts to Sunday. Uh, you'll have sheets every day of the week. Yeah, we'll have Aqueduct, Churchill, all five days, or Ch- Ch- Churchill starting tomorrow. So four days at Churchill. We've got Aqueduct, got some Del Mar. Hopefully the rain st- stays away from Churchill because they the turf actually has looked pretty decent on the races they've run. But Not I think better. it's supposed to rain a little this weekend, and some of these races look intriguing on the grass. So hopefully the weather stays away and they can get the final weekend in on the um, turf. And are you wanting to ride up to Turfway with me for opening night? No, I'm, you know, Turfway, Turfway have a grandstand? Yeah. Well, it's a it's slot there? parlor. But it's there. It's there. Yeah. They're, they're, they're open for business. So what days are they running this year? What, cause they switch it. I feel like, are they going yeah, Thursday to Sunday? I think it's Thursday to, no, nah, I think they went with Thursday to Saturday, but let's look. Is it night racing or day racing? Yeah, they they kept the night, which I like. I know they tried the day yeah, last year. That was that was an odd experiment. I agree because uh, I'm a big nothing wrong with playing Aqueduct all day in December. They're going right to Turfway to play. Absolutely not. Uh, no Wednesday. Wednesday at six fifteen. No Sundays. So Wednesday, Saturday. I mean, their fields are going to be huge because yeah, of the person. I'd be shocked yeah. if the first few weeks the average field size isn't uh, – I'd be surprised if it's less than 10. And you got Wesley Ward gearing up for Turfway. He's probably got yeah. 50 horses ready to run opening weekend. Then he hasn't ran in seven months, so there's a <laughs> lot of trainers that gear up for Turfway. Geraldo Corrales will win uh, $20 horses twice a night. Yeah, no, I, I, we've me? talked about this many times. He's He's pretty underrated. I mean, he oh, rides for Maker on prices. When he, when he gets to Maker, you really got to pay attention to him. Yeah, no, he's uh, – I, I mean, I'm sure part of it is – I know his English isn't great. He's not out there. Um, but, I mean, we're going on a year now, and the guy just does not take money and wins races. It's – I guess we should stop talking about it because that's that's our opportunity. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's good wherever he is. That's next week. Uh this is this week, though, Thanksgiving. You'll be at the track. I'll be at the in-laws. And then uh, Clark and Stars are tomorrow. And then a mandatory payout Sunday. So a lot of action at Churchill.
Yeah, I'm looking forward to. You're not pulling the track in laws double. Nah, they're they're in Georgetown, Kentucky, so it's a little bit oh, of a yeah. schlep. That's hard to pull. But uh, certainly be be watching uh, if not on TV via the the mobile device. And after this week, uh, certainly some turfway chatter. But Aqueduct, uh, they have their big uh, races coming up, and then I know you have a big splash for the championship meet at Gulfstream. Yeah, and then um, the Aqueduct for the Naira guys. This is the last weekend on the turf. Their Sunday's their last day on the turf, so you won't see grass racing in New York till April after this Sunday. All right. Well, we'll bid that farewell. You won't see it in uh, Kentucky until April either. Maybe after. not at the fairgrounds very often either. No, uh, the, the grass uh, has not been greener at most places, but uh, we do have Florida racing returning. Obviously, California uh, rarely Tampa has Bay this today. issue. Tampa Bay, yep. So, Jason Beam, good luck to him and his uh, next meet. Good luck to us this weekend. I'll be sending in on that mandatory payout. And if injunction is, uh, I would say six to one or better, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a player for sure. I would say he's around the eight to one range. I feel yeah. like Rich Strike, West Willpower, Proxy, to all those horses will be ahead of him. Folsom's kind of a fraud, so he'll probably take some right. fraud money. But yeah, you'll probably get eight to ten to one on him. All right, I'm in. Well, happy Thanksgiving, Prince. Happy Thanksgiving to you. When's and opening day for uh, the Stangs? Monday night. Monday night. We got in the old back here now. Uh, no, it's Emmanuel, not in the OC. All right, when's the home opener? I got to check out that HRN Tuesday. ad. Tuesday, but Tuesday? The, that won't be in. That won't be until next Friday because they're not coming out until next Friday. Uh, Friday right. night. I'm saving it for the good night. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna come to a game. You can cook me up with tickets. You just let me know. I'll save you that eight bucks. All right, I'm in. All right, that's uh, David Levich. We've got the squirrel at the bottom. You check out his picks there. Plenty of action this weekend. Good luck, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving.